فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أخذنا في الدرس الماضي ولله الحمد والمنة ما يتعلق بشيء من سجود من أحكام سجود السهم in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the one who bestows mercy and evil praises is due to Allah. And may peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the previous lesson, we studied some of the rulings which relate to sujood al-sahu, the sujood which is done out of forgetfulness. Sifat sujood al-sahu. The description of how this sujood is made. Yaqul Allahu Akbar. A person, he says Allahu Akbar. Dur raf'adain. Without raising his hands. Yes, yud. He goes down into the prostration. في السجود يقول سبحان ربي الأعلى وجوبا مرة واحدة. And in the sujood he says سبحان ربي الأعلى at least once as an obligation. ويستحب له أن يزيد بما ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then it is recommended for him to increase according to that which has been narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. ثم يكبر ويجلس. And then after this he says the takbir. I he says الله أكبر. He sits up. يقول رب اغفر لي. He says رب اغفر لي. مرة واحدة وجوبا ويستحب له أن يزيد بما ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says رب اغفر لي at least once as an obligation and then he increases according to the narration. ثم يكبر ويسجد. And then he says الله أكبر once more and he goes back into sujood. مثل السجود الأول. Like he did with the first sujood. ثم يكبر ويجلس. And then he says the takbir and he sits up. ثم يسلم. And يمينه وعن شماله دون أن يقول شيء. And then he makes the taslim towards his right and left without saying anything. هذا هذا هو الذي يعني ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سجود السهو. So this is what has been narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم regarding sujood al-sahu. Mata yakun? Hal qabla al-salam aw ba'd al-salam? When should a person make the prostration of forgetfulness? Is it before the original taslim or after? هناك قول للشيخ بن سعد رحمه الله تعالى مريح جدا يقول يصح أن يجعل السجود قبل أو بعد السلام ولا إشكال. There is an opinion or a statement by Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'id رحمه الله which is very easy and that is that he said it is allowed for a person to make sujood sahu whether it's before the taslim or after the taslim and it doesn't matter. لو سها في السهو if a person forgets to make sujood al-sahu. يعني في سجود السهو بعد السجدة الثانية عندما يجلس قال التحيات لله ثم تنبه أنه هنا لا يمكن يقول شيء فماذا يصنع؟ يعني في سجود السهو قلنا بعد السجدة الثانية يجلس يسلم مباشرة هو عندما جلس قال التحيات لله ثم تنبه. So let's say somebody he for he forgets or misses something or adds something during sujood al-sahu itself. As an example. After a person has made the second sujood al-sahu, he sits up and he stops saying at-tahiyyat, he stops saying the tashahud. Then he remembers that sujood al-sahu, it doesn't have a tashahud. What does he do? فماذا يصنع؟ يسلم ولا شيء عليه. Immediately he performs the taslim and there's nothing upon him. هذا معنى ما قلنا أنه إذا سهو في السهو فلا شيء عليه. أخطأ في السهو فلا شيء عليه. So this is a principle that we have. That if somebody forgets something during the prostration of forgetfulness, there is nothing upon him. He just makes a tasleem. Now, نبدأ الآن بإذن الله تعالى بذكر ما يتعلق بالوضوء والاغتسال والتيمم. So now we're going to begin studying or discussing that which relates to الوضوء and غسل and التيمم. صفة الوضوء. The description of wudu. ينوي بقلبه. A person he has to have the intention, his niya in his heart. ثم يسمي يقول بسم الله. And then he says بسم الله. He mentions the name of Allah. ثم يستحب له غسل الكفين. Then it is recommended for him to wash his hands. ثم يأخذ 
حفنة من ماء بيده اليمنى يضع الماء في كف يده اليمنى. And then he takes a handful of water in his right palm. ثم يدخل الماء في فيه ويسحب الماء من خليه. And then he places water in his mouth and also he rinses his nose at the same time. يضع الماء في كفه اليمنى. So he takes water in his right hand, his right palm. ويدخل تقريبا نصف هذا الماء في فيه. So he he puts half of that water into his mouth. ثم البق بقية الماء النصف الآخر يسحب من من خري يجعل يدخل في من خري. He puts the 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 second half of that water it goes into his nostrils. يسحب. نعم. أي سنفس أي سنفس إذا. نعم. ثم يجعل الماء يدور في فمه في فين. And then he rinses his mouth with the water inside of the mouth with the water. ثم يخرج الماء من من خريه يعني بالهواء وبيده اليسرى. And also using his left hand he rinses the water out from his nostrils. نعم. مرة واحدة أو مرتين أو ثلاث مرات. And a person can do this either once, twice or three times. ثم يغسل الوجه من ماء منحنى الجبهة أو من منبت الشعر المعتاد إلى أسفل الذقن طولا. And then after this, a person washes his face. And what are the limits of the face? Vertically, beginning from where the hair would normally grow on the top of the forehead. To his chin. ومن شحمة الأذن إلى شحمة الأذن عرضا. And from the beginning of the ear to the ear horizontally. نعم. وما استرسل من اللحية كذلك. And anything which goes down from the beard, all of this comes under being the face. نعم. ثم يغسل اليد اليمنى من أطراف الأصابع حتى يستوعب المرفقين. And then after this, a person he washes his right arm, and he does this by beginning with the fingertips of the right hand, up to and including the elbow of the right arm. ولا يغسل العضد. But he doesn't wash the shoulder or the upper arm. يبدأ باليد اليمنى ثم اليد اليسرى. He begins with the right side first, the right arm, and then the left. مرة أو مرتين أو ثلاث مرات. And this can be done once, twice, or three times. ثم يمسح الرأس ولا يغسل. And then a person he wipes over his head with wet hands, but he doesn't wash his head. يبدأ بمقدمة الرأس. He begins from the beginning of the head. إلى قفاه ثم يعود مرة أخرى. And he and he takes his wet hands all the way to the neck, and then he returns his hands back to where he began them from. ويدخل سباحتين في صماخي أذني. And he also wipes the inside of his ears with his index fingers. ويمسح بالإبهام ظاهرهما. And with the thumbs, he wipes over the outside of his ears. ثم يغسل الرجل اليمنى مع الكعبين دون أن يغسل الساقين. And then he washes his right foot up to and including the ankles, but he doesn't go up to his shin. ويخلل أص استحب له تخليل أصابع الرجلين بخنصره. And it is recommended for him to separate and wipe between the toes with his little finger. فإذا انتهى من وضوءه. So if and then he does it with the left foot and then when he has finished his wudu. جاء بالذكر الوالد على النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. Then he mentions the remembrance which has been narrated from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. عندنا فروض الوضوء ستة. So we have six obligations of the wudu. لا بد منها. And these six obligations have to be fulfilled. غسل الوجه مع المضمضة والاستنشاق. Washing the face along with rinsing the mouth and the nostrils. واليدين مع المرفقين. غسل اليدين مع المرفقين. And washing the arms. Included from the fingertips all the way to the elbows. ومسح الرأس مع الأذنين. And wiping over the head along with the ears. وغسل الرجلين مع الكعبين. And a person washing his feet up to and including the ankles. والترتيب لا بد يرتب على هذا الترتيب. And then the fifth wajib, the fifth obligation is that this has to be done in the correct order.
والموالاة هي المتابعة أي لا يفصل بين هذه الأركان بفاصل. And then the sixth obligation is that when you are washing each body part, it has to be done in succession, meaning there isn't a long gap or delay between washing one body part and the next one. يعني الآن بعد ما غسل الوجه. As an example. After a person washes his face, he starts speaking on the phone. So if he now wants to start carry on and continue the wudu, we say no, you have to start from the beginning. Why? Because any act of worship must be done in succession. Now, meaning one body part follows the next body part immediately. Now after the wudu. The matters which invalidate or break a person's wudu. What are the invalidators of the wudu? The person who doesn't know the invalidators of wudu, perhaps he has invalidated his wudu and he doesn't know. So any discharge. From a person's private parts, from the front or the back, from a male or a female, any discharge from any one of the two uh, private parts breaks and invalidates a person's wudu. So any discharge from the private parts invalidates a person's wudu. Whether it is urine or excrement, or the passing of wind, or a tooth. <laughs> or anything, anything like uh, <laughs> or any stone <laughs> or dam <dumb>, or blood. <laughs> so anything which is discharged or comes out of the private parts, it breaks a person's wudu. Now, أكل لحم الجزور أكل لحم الإبل. Eating camel meat also invalidates a person's wudu. زوال العقل يعني ذهاب العقل إذا ذهب عقله بنوم أو إغماء أو سكر أو جنون. If a person loses his mind, i.e., whether it's through a person becoming unconscious or sleeping or being drunk or insanity, mental disability, anything which causes the intellect of a person to go invalidates his wudu. الصحيح أن النوم غير ناقض الوضوء لكن هو ما ظن بخروج الريح. The correct opinion is that sleeping in of itself doesn't break a person's wudu, but there's a strong likelihood or high probability that during a person sleeping, perhaps he has passed wind. So because of that likelihood of the wudu being broken, we say the sleep also breaks a person's wudu. نعم. فهذا الأخ هنا. غلب شيء من النعاس وهو جالس الآن في الدرس. So a particular brother, if he is slightly overcome with sleep whilst he is sitting and listening to the lesson and he just nods off. فنقول هل تشعر بنفسك؟ قال نعم أشعر بنفسي وأنا مستمع لكل شيء وأشعر أني لم يخرج مني شيء. فهذا وضوء صحيح. So we ask him that are you in control of yourself? Do you know your surroundings? And he says yes. He goes, even though sleep overcame me, but I was listening to the lesson, I know what's happening around me, I didn't break my wudu. Now, but if he said, no, I, I, I didn't feel anything, I totally lost my, uh, my thinking, then his wudu is broken. And also from those matters which invalidate a person's wudu, and purity is leaving the religion of Islam. May Allah save us and we ask for safety and pardoning. Because this corrupts and loses every action. Now, صفت al The description of making or performing ghusl. al ala صفتين. So there are two ways of performing ghusl. صفة كاملة مستحبة. أعلى صفة للاغتسال. There is the most perfect and recommended manner of performing ghusl. And then there is another description of making ghusl which is sufficient. Any 
إذا فعلها العبد خرج منها إلى الصلاة وصلى ولا يحتاج إلى وضوء أو إعادة الوضوء. So either one of these two ways or methods of performing ghusl, whether a person performs the most perfect and complete and recommended form of ghusl, or a person performs the minimum level of ghusl, which is enough and sufficient and accepted, whichever one of the two a person performs, then this is enough for him to go and pray and he doesn't need to perform wudu. So the minimum accepted level of ghusl is that a person he has the intention in his heart that he is performing ghusl he says bismillah and he covers all of his body with water water runs all of his body including his hair whether it's a little amount of hair or it is a lot of hair and he has to also rinse his mouth nostrils and blow the water out. So as long as a person has done this, then his, his ghusl is complete and he can pray. So this is the minimum level. A person, he has the intention in his heart. He says Bismillah, he mentions the name of Allah. He washes all of his body with water in one go and also his hair and as long as he rinses his mouth and his nostrils, his nose and then the second time type of description or manner of performing ghusl is the way in which the Prophet used to do it and this is what has been recommended and it is more perfect and more complete. Now, <coughs> that a person, he begins by washing his private parts, the front and the back. And he has the intention in his heart. He mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. Washes his hands. Rinses his mouth and his nostrils. Washes his face. Then he washes his right hand and then his left hand. And then he washes his head and he washes his hair and the ears. And then he rinses all the right hand side of his body with water and rinses or washes the left hand side of his body with water. And then he finishes with washing his right foot and then his left foot. And then after this he can leave for the prayer. So one more time. He washes his private parts, the front and the back. Has the intention in the heart. Say, mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. Washes his hands. Rinses his mouth and his nose and his nostrils. Washes his face. Washes his right arm and his left arm. And then he washes his head and his hair and his ears. Then he washes the right hand side of his body and then the left hand side of his body, all of it. And then he washes his right foot and the left foot. What are those things which necessitate or obligate for us to make a ghusl? Meaning, when does it become an obligation upon a person to perform ghusl? Islam al-kafir. When a non-Muslim accepts Islam. So when a non-Muslim enters into Islam and becomes a new Muslim, he has to perform ghusl. Maut ghayr al-shaheed. Ya'ani. Ida maat indana Muslim, la bud min taqseeli. Illa al-shaheed, la yughassar. So any Muslim, who dies has to be given ghusl. And the only exception is a person who dies as a martyr in the way of jihad. When a person has a seminal discharge, meaning when semen is discharged from him, whether it was a wet dream, if he is awake, or if he was sleeping, as long as there is a sexual discharge from a person, he has to perform ghusl. 
and also sexual intercourse. And also when a woman she stops bleeding her uh, menstrual bleeding or postnatal bleeding i.e. after pregnancy she has to perform ghusl. Sifat at The description of at A person he has the intention in the heart he mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. ثم يضرب بباطن الكفين على الأرض. And then he places the palms of his hands upon the earth. سواء كانت هذه الأرض من من رمل. Whether it was sand, أو طين, أو clay, أو تراب, أو soil, أو حصى, أو stones, أو صخر, أو larger pebbles. ولكن لا يمكن أن يضرب على المكيف على القماش. but it's not allowed for a person to place his hands upon fabric for example. ولا الخشب. and neither wood. ولا على هذه ال السمن جدران اللي هي من البوية والسمنت. and neither a plaster or cement. ولا على الحديد. or upon metal. نعم على الأرض. So a person has to place his hands upon the earth. Turab, whether it is soil, ramel, sand, tin, clay, hasa, stone, sahar, or rocks and boulders. Now, darba wahida fakat, and a person only places his hands once upon the earth or hits the earth once with his hands. So ma'am sahal waj, and then after this he wipes over his face. Wa zahir al kaf al yumna, wa zahir al kaf al yusra. And then he wipes over the his. The out of his right hand and the left hand. Now, ينوي بقلبه. Again, a person makes the intention in his heart. يسمى يقول بسم الله. Mentions the name of Allah by saying بسم الله. ضرب واحد على الأرض. Places his hands or hits the earth with his hands once. يمسح الوجه. Wipes over his face. وظاهر اليمنى وظاهر اليسرى. And then the out his outer hands, the right and the left. Now, هذا ما يتعلق ب. صفت التيمم. So this is what relates to the description of performing تيمم. المسح على الجوربين، المسح على الخفين، المسح على ما يلبس على الرجلين مثل هذا اللي نلبسها عاد سميها جلها. So wiping over footwear, whether it is socks or خف leather socks or anything which is worn over the foot. إذا أردنا أن نمسح على هذه الأشياء لا بد من شروط. If we want to wipe over any type of footwear, then we have to fulfill certain conditions. لا بد أن يلبس الجوربين أو الخفين أو يقوم ما يقوم مقامهما على طهارة كاملة يعني يتوضع وضوء كامل ويغسل الرجلين بالماء ثم يلبس. First of all. That that footwear you which you are wearing that you want to wipe over, <coughs> you have to have worn that footwear in a state of purity. Meaning, you performed wudu, you washed your feet, you completed your wudu, and then you placed on the footwear, whatever the type of footwear is. The second condition is that the footwear you are wearing has to be pure and not impure, not najis. Well, asal fiha tahar. And of course, the default ruling when it comes to clothing and foot footwear is that it is pure. الثالث أن تكون ساترة لغالب العضو. And then the third condition is that that footwear you are wearing has to cover most of your foot, the majority of your foot. لدينا في هذه الأيام جوارب قصيرة يعني يخ ترى يخرج الكعبين. هذه صحة المسح عليها لأنها تستر غالب العضو. And nowadays we have those socks, the ankle socks or the sport socks, which don't cover the ankle. However, they cover most of the foot. It is correct for a person to wipe over those. حتى ولو كانت خفيفة. Even if the the socks or the footwear is very light. حتى ولو كنت ترى القدم. Even if you can see your foot through it. أو حتى ولو كانت مخرقة يصح المسح عليها. Even if there are holes in your footwear. المهم أنها تستر غالب العضو. The condition is or the principle is that the majority of your foot is covered. ال الشرط الرابع أن يكون ال المسح في الحدث الأصغر لا في الحدث الأكبر. The fourth condition is that you are only permitted to wipe over to make مسح. Over your footwear from minor impurity and not major impurity. لأنه في الحدث الأكبر لا بد من اختصار. Because when it comes to major impurity, the حدث الأكبر 
then you have to perform ghusl. Now, وَعَنْ يَكُونَ الْمَسْحِ فِي الْوَعْتِ And then the fifth condition is that the masih, the wiping over the footwear, has to be within the time period which has been permitted for us. يَوْمْ وَلَيْلَ لِلْمُقِيمِ يعني 24 ساعة للمقيم A day and a night for a resident, meaning 24 hours. وَثَلَاثَ أَيَّا بِلَالِيهَا لِلْمُسَافِرِ يعني 72 ساعة. And three days and nights for a traveling person, meaning 72 hours. صفة المسح The description of wiping over the footwear. يمسح على ظاهرهما That a person, he wipes over just the top of the footwear, not the bottom, not the soles, just the top. نعم. إما أن يمسح باليدين Either both feet with both hands in one go على الرجلين في وقت واحد أو يمسح على اليمنى أولا ثم على اليسار ثانيا. Or that a person he starts with his right foot first and then he does his left. يبدأ الوقت متى. When does the time period begin for which a person is then allowed to wipe over? يبدأ وقت المسح لا وقت اللبس. The time period starts not when you have first worn the footwear, but when you have made mash over it once. As soon as you have made mash once, now your 24 hours have started. Now, يبقى معنا ما يتعلق بإزالة النجاسة. The thing which remains with us now is the removal of impurities, the removal of نجاسة. النجاسة عندنا كيف تزال؟ so how are impurities, how is najasa removed? The removal of impurities or najasa is done in one of three ways. Or we can say that there are three different types of najasa, three different types of impurities. The severe impurity, the weak and lesser impurity, and then that which is in the middle, the moderate impurity. قليل من الصعوبة وإزالة فيها تسهيل وإزالة متوسطة. and these three types of najasa, the severe impurity requires a little amount of effort, and then the less severe impurity requires very little effort, and then the one which is moderate. نعم. النجاسة المغلظة. so the most severe, heaviest type of impurity. وهي نجاسة الكلب إذا ولغ في الإناء يعني إذا شرب لأنه يشرب بإخراج اللسان. نعم. And this is the impurity of a dog when he licks or when he drinks from a utensil. Because whenever a dog drinks from the utensil, he his he touches the utensil with his tongue. So this is the most severe type of impurity. نعم. فإذا شرب الكلب من إناء ماذا نصنع؟ هذا الماء نفرق كل ما فيه من ماء. So if a dog licks or drinks from a utensil or from water which is in a utensil, what should we do? The first thing we have to do is the contents of that utensil, the water for example, we have to spill it. And then seven times the utensil is washed with water but the first of these seven rinses has to be with soil. So in the first rinse, a person places just soil uh, in the utensil. نعم. ثم ست مرات بالماء. المرة الأولى وتريق الماء ثم الثا الثانية إلى ست مرات يكون المجموع سبع مرات. And then six times you rinse that utensil with water, meaning you place water in the utensil, you rinse it, you spill the water out, second time, third time, up until you wash it six times, and all together it's now become seven times. The first time it was with soil only, and the second six times was with water. Then we have the other impurity, which is the lesser or the weaker type of impurity. The lesser form of impurity, it's enough for us to maybe sprinkle some water over the impurity. And then the moderate impurity, we have to sprinkle with water, but at the same time squeeze the water out. Now, لو هناك كاسة ماء بين كاسة ماء فارغة أو كوب empty glass of water. نعم. لا لا لا. empty empty. نعم. إذن 
So the least, the lesser type of impurity is not for us to merely uh, sprinkle some water on it. And as for the moderate impurity, then water has to be used and we squeeze that water out. So we said regarding the lesser type of impurity, it's enough to merely sprinkle water. So what are the lesser or weaker types of impurities? Number one, Al-Madi. And Al-Madi, Al-Madi? What is Al-Madi? Al-Madi huwa sha'il laysa lahu law. Mithil al-ma' laysa lahu law. So Al-Madi is pre-seminal discharge. It is a clear liquid which has no color to it, like water. Now, يخرج عند التفكير أو التقبيل أو ما إلى ذلك. Al-Madi is discharged when a person has a thought of an intimate nature or some kissing. Najis. It is impure. It breaks a person's wudu. If it is discharged from you, then you have to wash the private parts and that which is around the private parts are the testicles. Because if a person washes his private parts and the area around it, i.e. the testicles, then the, uh, there, will no, there, there won't be any longer uh, discharge of the pre-seminal fluid. And this is what the Prophet ordered with. Now, if some madhi, pre-seminal fluid, if it uh, spoils a person's clothing. What should we do? So it's not for a person to maybe take some water and sprinkle over that area in which was spoiled by al madi So madi is najis. So al madi it is impure, but the lesser, weaker type of impurity, and it is enough to rinse water over it, sprinkle it with water. And if there is a discharge of madi, then a person has to wash his private parts and the testicles. And if it spoils a person's clothing, then you merely sprinkle water over it. Without needing to squeeze the water out. Now, uh, And as for the other types of uh, impurities, then they are those which are moderate. So we have to sprinkle or spill water over it. And then squeeze out the water. Now, and by this, a person's طهر. garments نعم. or clothing is then pure. So if, for example, some urine spoils your clothing, what should you do? You wash it with water or sprinkle water over it and then you squeeze that area out, the water starts to move. One more time. The types of impurities are three types and how to remove them are three types. There is the most severe form of impurity and this is the saliva of a dog or the licking of a dog and this has to be washed seven times. The first of these seven washes has to be with soil. And then there is the least severe type of impurity 
and this only requires sprinkling with water. And then the third type is the moderate amount or level, or, or level of impurity in terms of its severity and this requires rinsing or sprinkling with water as well as squeezing the water out. And if a person places his garments in a washing machine, this is enough. And that which remains with us are the manners of answering the call of nature. The Prophet did not leave anything except that he has taught us and given us knowledge regarding it. Firstly, when a person wants to answer the call of nature, I urinate, then he has to protect himself and hide himself from the vision of the people. So either a person enters into the cubicles and he closes it, or if he is in the desert, in the or if a person is outside somewhere, outside in the countryside or in the desert, then he tries to look for something by which he can cover and conceal himself from the other people. Behind a wall, a tree, or anything. And if he can't find anything to hide behind, then he distances himself from the people. And when entering into that area in which he is going to answer the call of nature, he starts with his left foot, he enters with his left foot. And before entering into that area, he mentions the name of Allah. And he says, And when he is leaving, he leaves, he leaves with his right foot. And after he's, he has left, he says, So he says, after he has left the area in which he has answered the call of nature. And it is not allowed for a person to enter into the area in which he has answered the call of nature with the mushaf the Quran or books of knowledge or anything which contains the name of Allah except if there is an absolute necessity also whilst a person is in that place or he is answering the call of nature he doesn't speak he does not speak at all and neither does he make mention of the name of Allah neither does he speak or converse with the people unless there is a necessity if, if uh, as an example, if somebody was in need of water and therefore he has to call out somebody, this is allowed. It is permitted for a person to urinate while standing up with two conditions. Firstly, that he is sure his aura, his private parts are not going to be seen by other people. And also he is sure or he takes precautions that the droplets of urine are not going to reflect back onto him. So if these two conditions are fulfilled, if these two conditions are fulfilled, then it is permitted for a person to urinate standing up, otherwise it is forbidden. It isn't allowed for a person to answer the call of nature in any area in which there is a harm or a, a nuisance to other people, even if they are disbelievers. Also in the masajid. Areas of people or areas where people sit or they gather. And, and areas where people stand, for example, the bus stops or the train stations. Also, it's not allowed for a person to urinate in or answer the call of nature in those areas 
that people rest or they or they take shade which are under trees تحت الاشجار المثمره life or, and also under a tree which produces fruit and people eat from that fruit في طريق الناس and also in the roads or the pathways that the people walk upon ويحرم عليه ان يبوء ان ان يبول او يتغوط في الماء الراكد الواقف الذي لا يجري also it is not permitted for a person to answer the call of nature or urinate in still standing water which is not flowing نعم وكذلك في المكان الذي يغتسل فيه and also it isn't allowed for a person to urinate in an area in which a person purifies himself with ghusl ولا يستقبل القبلة ولا يستدبرها and a person should not face the qibla no face gives back to the qibla while answering the call of nature في البنيان وفي خارج البنيان and this is the same of whether a person is inside a building or outside a building نعم لابد أن يختار مكان لبوله يكون رطب غير صلب حتى لا يرتد عليه الرشاش ويحصل بهذا شيء من الوسواس. And also if a person is going to urinate outside, then you have to make sure that the place that you are urinating in is soft, meaning that it uh, absorbs the urine. And so if it's something which is hard, then it's possible that the, the urine will be reflected back on you. نعم. إذا انتهى من قضاء الحاجة. When a person has finished answering the, the call of nature, لابد أن يقطع هذا الخارج. ينظف هذا الخ المكان. ينظف المكان الذي خرج منه البول والغائب. When a person has answered the call of nature, finished finished urinating, then he has to make sure he washes those private parts. إما أن يستعمل الماء. Either by using water to clean his private parts. واستعمال الماء الله أعلم واضح بين لا إشكال فيه. And this is clear. نعم أو استعمال الحجارة أو المناديل أو الخرق أو الأخشاب. Or that a person either uses water and or uses stones or toilet paper or leaves or fabric cloth or anything similar to this. نعم لا بد من ثلاث مسحات. So a person has to wipe himself or clean himself three times at least if he's using these things. لا يصح أن يمسح بمنديل واحد من مكان واحد من هذه الجهة. لو مسح من هذه الجهة مرة الأولى الثانية وقعت إذا مسح من نفس المكان إذا مسح على مكان نجس. When a person is cleaning and purifying himself after answering the call of nature with tissue of paper, for example, he has to do it three times. But these three times, it can't be using the same paper in the same place because the first time the paper becomes impure, and if you use that paper in the same place again, then it's more impurity. So either a person uses three separate pieces of paper, cleaning himself with each piece. Separately. وإذا كان الحجر كبير يصح أن يمسح مثلا مرة من هنا ومرة من هنا ومرة من هنا. Or if, for example, a person is using a stone which is big in size, then he can clean himself or wipe himself with one side of the stone and then another side of the stone and the third side of the stone. إذا لا يصح أن يمسح على مكان واحد أكثر من مسحه. But it's not allowed for a person to use the same spot to wipe himself with. فإذا حصل النقاء. حصلت الطهارة بثلاث مسحات اكتفى بها. So if a person has purified himself and that area is clean by using three different wipes of the paper, then this is enough. كيف يعرف النقاء؟ كيف يعرف الطهارة؟ How does a person know? How can he make sure that 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 area is now clean and pure? يرجع المنديل جاف ليس فيه شيء لا أذب للبول ولا للغائب. That on the third uh, white or the third tissue paper, there's no remnants of impurity. But if even with the third piece of paper, he finds remnants of impurity or wetness, then he has to have, or he has to wipe himself a fourth time. So four, five, six times until the last one that he wipes himself with, there's nothing on there. So as long as the last wiping of paper, it remains dry, it's not wet, there's no remnants of any impurity, then now it is clean.
وزوجي يعيد واحد استحبابا يزيد واحد استحبابا so in all cases you have to make sure that it's an odd number of times so even if for example it's been done with four uh, wipings of the tissue paper you increase one to make it five and this is a, a recommended act ولا ولا يجوز له أن يمس ذكره بيمينه and also it isn't permitted for a person to touch his private parts or the frontal private part with his right hand rather he uses his left hand also it is not allowed for a person to clean himself with any type of food whether it is the food of humans or the food of jinn or the food of cattle and animal it's not allowed for a person to use the food of any of these to clean and purify himself or to use any paper or anything which contains the name of Allah like for example an Arab newspaper Arab newspapers always have the name of Allah and also it's not allowed for a person to use something which is impure in itself to purify himself with because there's no benefit in this يكون بهذا وسط يتق الله سبحانه وتعالى في إزالة هذا لكن لا يصل إلى الوساوس نعم and in this manner a person remains in the middle at the same time he has feared Allah in purifying himself but at the same time he hasn't entered into the doubts and the whispers of shaitan ويصح له أن يستعمل المناديل أولا ثم بعد هذا الماء لا إشكال and it is permitted for a person to use tissue paper first or toilet paper first and then wash himself with water this is also okay لكن هذا ليس من باب التعبد هذا من باب البعد عن مس النجاسة بيدي but this isn't from the angle of worshipping Allah meaning we're not worshipping Allah through combining toilet paper with water rather this is from the angle of hygiene and a person not touching impurities نعم سنن الفطرة what are the sunan al-fitrah? And these are the actions or guidelines of personal hygiene. Trimming and shortening the moustache. Allowing the beard to grow. Clipping the nails. And a person uh, shaving the pubic hair, i.e. that which grows around the frontal private part. And a person plucking or removing So these matters, i.e. shaving the pubic hair or clipping the nails or removing hair from the armpits, there's a certain time period that we have to do it within. A person should not leave these things unintended for over 40 days. Within 40 days, he has to shorten or cut or shave those areas.